Kristen Brindley with Real Producers, and I'm here with the wonderful Brad Rosansky. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me, Kristen. It's very kind of you. Absolutely. Well, hey, you know, you're on our, our June cover here, and if you all haven't read it yet, make sure you do on DC Metro Real Producers June cover. It's a great story. <coughs> I enjoy Luke, too, who's in there as well, and he was a rising star with us, too. And Brad, you know, you've had an amazing career so far, and uh, I see more coming. And 44 years in the in the business, had your own brokerage, 29 years with Long and Foster. Um, you're at Compass, 1.25 billion dollars in business. You're a legend in the business. And so, you know, Brad, tell us how did you come into being a realtor? I mean, did you dream of it as a kid? How how did this path happen? I doubt anybody dreams about being a realtor. <laughs> Um, long story short, I was a zoology major with no course of direction. A buddy of mine was working for a company called Brenham and Associates selling condos because I was painting houses out of college. And um, I said, this sounds like fun. <laughs> and the rest is sort of history. So my old partner was a fellow named Paul Norwood, and he recruited a bunch of us to Brenneman. And three years later, we decided it was time to go on our own. That's pretty quick. You have an entrepreneurial spirit. So in school, you're, you're painting and then you, within three years, started your own brokerage. Yeah, um, we never had any intention of doing that, but it just seemed like the proper course at the time. We were young, 23 years old, 23 year old young men with no business plan and half the company left with us and the rest is sort of history. Wow. So can you tell me what's been, I mean, you, you have a, a, a long history, you're a legend in the, in the industry. Tell me like, what's been most rewarding for you, you know, in this journey? Uh, the rewarding part is we talked about in the article is really the family. You know, we, we were running a business and, you know, to be able to see my kids grow up and all of them are some sort of in this, in this world and see them successful. It's just, that's the reward. It's not about selling over a billion dollars in real estate. That's expected after, you know, the amount of time I've been in the business, so. Um, well, you did over 50 million last year though. I mean, you definitely. So I always, I love it how you always, you bring it back to family first. You know, tell us a little bit about your family. Well, um, my, my wife, Kathy and I have been blessed to be married over 35 years and we've been working together in the business during all that time. And uh, she's in charge of the finances of our business, and it's been great. And then my daughter, Lucy, got in it, was on our team for three or four years. After college, she ended up being an aggressive little booger. And um, <laughs> she went to school in Colorado and came to us one day and go, I, I can't live in D.C. anymore. I got to go back out to Colorado. So she established an unbelievable real estate career out there. Middle son, Eli, went to school in Denver sort of the same story, not coming home, love Colorado. And he's in the commercial world. He did, he's done commercial lending and now acquisitions. And then Luke, who was uh, blessed to be on the cover of your magazine as a rising star. Luke's on our team. He does unbelievable. He's de developed his own niche and uh, never asked any of the kids to get in it. They just, they followed in your footsteps. That, that has to be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care that they followed in our footsteps. They decided what they wanted to do for a career on their own. There was never any prodding. Come on in, you can take over. Um, they're going to do what they want to do. They're very independent. Yeah. Well, um, that's rough. You got to, you know, go visit Colorado. So, you know, Brecken Breckenridge, right? Or <laughs> that's, yeah, throw a wedding at 8,500 feet. That's another story. <laughs> I bet you that. I bet you that was fun. So it was great. <laughs> Speaking of challenges, like what's been most challenging, you know, in, in this journey of real estate for you? I think the most challenging part is really the head journey. It's, it's an interesting business and um, it's changed dramatically. And at the top of this business, everybody has the same thoughts every January. You know, what's this year going to bring? It's interesting how December and January just totally different months, years and careers. And um, that's probably the biggest part. And or if you have an off month, which you're going to have, or you're going to have an off two months, or you go on 10 appointments and you only get two of those listings, you know, just in front of the wrong people. So it's just to uh, um, not let your head get bothered by it. That's some great advice. 
Well, speaking of that, um, what de- can you define success for us? So what does success mean to Brad Rosansky? Um, success means, you know, being able to support your family, you know, it, in being somewhat liked by your peers. You're not going to be liked by all your peers. That's impossible. Um, you, you try hard. I see you making a face about that. You can't be liked by all your peers. It's especially true. When- yeah. Especially if you're number one at any point too, right? Like that makes it difficult. Yeah. But, but number one, there's, there's a story I tell and I'll leave the agent's name anonymous. He's so wonderful. He was in my Long and Foster office and he's still over there. And he was an immigrant coming to this country, couldn't speak a word of English. And he introduces himself to me and he goes, Brad, I came to this office to beat you because I'm going to be number one. And I said, stop right here. Number one is I'm number one in this office. If you truly want to be number one in the company, you need to go down to Fleischer's office because Mark is number one in the company. Number two, it's not about being number one. It's what you take home to mama. And number three is you will be number one. And in units, he is number one. I'll just share his name. His name's Juan Manzor. And he's a wonderful human being. He's got a beautiful family and we, are so happy about his success. You know, um, I enjoyed his story. He's been on our cover too. And I yeah, he's the best. Lot. Yeah, I like, I like him a lot. Um, well, so tell us what are you currently learning? So what's, what's important to you right now? Currently learning in regards to life or business? Whatever you want to share. Um, I mean, I'm at the tail end of my career, so it, it's really deciding where I'm going at, at this stage of my life. I'm going to be 67 shortly. We have a grandkid, another one on the way in, in Denver, so that's that's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, our kids have been long off the payroll, so we're not worried about supporting them, which is part of the success as a parent. And so um, it's just deciding when it's time to sort of hang up the listing presentation. So for you, um, do you have any favorite quotes or books or um, even advice for uh, other real producers, something you've done others should do? Well, one of my favorite quotes is the old sales trainer, Tommy Hopkins, which anybody who's been to business long enough would know who Tom Hopkins is. And uh, I never see failure as failure as only as the opportunity to change my course and direction. And I never see failure as failure, but only as the opportunity to develop my sense of humor. I learned those in 1977 and I still remember them. I love it. I feel that everybody should listen to this and and heed what you just said. Um, What do you think sets you apart, um, makes you different, Brad? Oh, God. (laughs) I I, want to have as much fun as you can in a very stressful business. And um, I think to never get hung up in the ego. Um, I remember being on a panel with Fleischer back in the 80s and there were two or 300 people in the room. And I looked at him and I go, you guys got to get over yourselves. All we're doing is selling a house. You didn't save somebody's life. You know, stop the ego. Because whether you're selling a $100,000 house or a $5 million house, it's somebody's castle and they hired you to do it. And granted the commission's a whole lot nicer on the 5 million, but the problem with this business, so many people think they're, they're what's the word? Um, their egos get in the way. And it, I don't, I don't, it's, but that happens in any business. So. It's true. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've seen a lot of humble top top people though so like a lot of the covers it's so it's so interesting to see the humble you know you brought up someone that um you know to me seemed very humble um as well and and you uh don't talk about numbers you talk about family and the journey so i um i appreciate people like you in the community well well, numbers are is a a competitor of mine has a great expression It's, it's only a moment in time there's always going to be somebody who does something more than you or has a bigger deal than you, or you had an off year, or maybe God forbid you were sick and you couldn't work like you needed to work. So, you know, I don't look at numbers anymore. I didn't look at the number that you said I did last year. 
um, it's not relevant anymore. When I was younger, sure, there was the ego with that, but I'm so far past that at this point because the numbers can also get in the way. And that is a lesson. Brad, so what would you like to be remembered for? Um, just probably like anybody else in this business. I mean, you just sort of be remembered for being a nice guy and trying your hardest for your clients and being fair to your competitors. You know, um, it's nice to be able to talk to people you've known for 30 years in this business and 40 years and joke and try to have a good time putting a deal together. Um, there's just too much stress in this world and in this business. And I don't know how to alleviate it other than a lot of it's in your mind. Yeah. It's a hard business and it's so hard now, you know, with the pandemic and the lack of inventory and agents working their butts off for these, for buyers and maybe writing five, 10, 15 offers and not getting one. And one of the things I think I'll, I'll share is, you know, with technology, especially with a lot of the younger agents, they're texting all the time. And we make it a point of calling every agent that writes in our con a, a contract on our listing to let them know they didn't get it and to let them know where actually they were in the fray. So I, I remember we had a, a property with 21 offers on it and I started at number 21 and let's just say you were the agent and say, hey, Kristen, it's Brad. I want to thank you for writing. I just want to let you know you came in number 21 so you can tell your buyer and just you deserve a phone call. Because you spent hours and hours and hours, not a text message. That's just wrong. In my opinion, I'm old. I don't think that's the way to address somebody. Well, you're you're teaching at the same time. Like you're giving you're giving knowledge to them too, which I think is super relevant and helpful. Um, but everybody says thank you. They appreciate it. You know, the email and the text isn't what you do when somebody's worked so damn hard. Well, and markets change, right? So. Um, oh yeah. There, there won't be a shortage at some point. So the people that were kind will be remembered for being kind. <laughs> right, and you want them to remember that you were a good guy. So I guess the, the next question, what, what do you feel is maybe the greatest lesson you've ever learned? Uh, greatest lesson. Well, that you're not too old to learn. You know, I, I just had a transaction that I won't go into it because we don't have an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> but between myself and the settlement attorney who have the same amount of time in the business, we go, we've never experienced this before. We've never experienced a buyer like this before. So you're never too old to learn. Because, you know, with the thousands and thousands of deals that we've sold, you think I've seen everything. But you haven't. There's always, there's always something new on the horizon. And you got to be prepared to handle it. Well, and um, from what you said earlier about, you know, getting your mind right and it's totally, it's a head, it's a head game. Um, do you have any advice for uh, other agents to get their head right or any books they can read or audios or, um, you know, do you have any advice for them on that? Um, the advice is I attribute the success of my career to going to a sales trader named Mike Ferry. A lot of people didn't like Mike and his abrasiveness. But he puts you, in my opinion, in the right head game, as you and I talked about uh, the other day, is, you know, he prepared you for doing 30 deals and 50 deals and 100 deals. And our, our best year was 450 deals. But my mind was there yes. yeah. to, to handle it and to find a sales trainer that you're comfortable with and stay with him. Um, very few people, I think, have the talent to do this without some type of training. There's always those superstars who don't need training. But there are a whole lot of wonderful real estate trainers out there. And don't think you're above learning from somebody because you also then go to their conferences and you get exposed to the best people in the country, which is what you're doing at your events. Thank you. Well, um, speaking of real producers is um, like, what do you um, what do you personally like about real producers or what, what are your thoughts on real producers? <laughs> I like the owner. <laughs> I think you and I talked about it last week is that um, you have a, a, a very difficult business, I believe, to, to make it work and you've expanded it and you've grown it and you're the one who deserves a congratulations. Somebody should interview you on one of these podcasts. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Brad. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate it. Well, is there, is there anything else you'd like to share with our, our real producers out there? Um, 
Nothing that I can think of. If you have an additional question, I just think try to enjoy this, this crazy unprecedented market uh, as much as you can. And for those people, if you can come out of this market successful, if you're a new agent, you're gonna have an unbelievable career. The other part, if you happen to be new and listening to this, remember this again, unless you're that unbelievable superstar with an unbelievable network, this takes three years to get going. Don't give up after a year. It, it's a very difficult business, but once you get it going, um, you can count on it to, to help your family, you know, to support your family. Thank you, Brad. That's that I think that's amazing advice to so just stick, just stick with it, man. Just stick with it and it'll work out. Just stick with it. Um, yeah, and don't and don't be, I guess the other advice I would give, don't be afraid to ask a top producer out to lunch. Nobody's going to turn you down for a free lunch. I don't care where they are in their careers. You're flattered. People don't think about that. And you're going to learn something. That is amazing advice. You heard it here at Real Producers with Brad Rosansky. Um, thanks so much, Brad. Thanks, Kristen. It was really great. I appreciate the opportunity. Bye, everybody. <laughs>